<laughs> I'm Beth Younger. I teach English at Drake. I also teach women's studies, and I like to read as much as possible in my spare time. And I also have kind of a bizarre obsession with right-wing uh, fundamentalist religious movements. I tend to watch religious TV sometimes in my spare time just to make myself really mad. And uh, one day I was actually watching the Discovery Channel and came across this very odd documentary called The Purity Balls. And it was about this sort of fundamentalist Christian movement that requests that young women, very young women, some of them, some of them as young as seven or eight, go to, they essentially attend a ball or a dance with their father and they pledge their virginity to their father, which I thought was extremely creepy and weird. So I found out a little bit more about it and it's actually part of what is called the Quiverful Movement, which, um, so I found out about this book. I'm not really sure, I don't remember exactly how I found out about the book, but I bought it in hardback because I was so interested in it and it's by a woman named Catherine Joyce who is a journalist and the book is, uh, quite a sort of a stunning book to read because it's so disturbing but it's about quiverful which is a what she calls a Christian patriarchy movement and it's a movement that started in 1989 with the publication of a book that describes it and it's basically a movement that suggests that God created women to serve men and to be vessels for reproduction which sounds a little odd maybe um, so women are basically asked, uh, they're there to bless men, to help men, and not to train them. So essentially it's a very hierarchical kind of movement where women are essentially supposed to have as many children as, they, as their bodies can pr provide. Most women in the Quiverful Movement have at least six, some have 12, some has, have 14, some have as many as 16. There's one woman in this book, I think she's 34, has 11 already. I mean, you just get pregnant, and you have the baby, and then you take a month off, and then you have another one. So, um, which I think is a little bit strange. And some of the, I mean, there's so many things I could talk about with the book, but I think what's really fascinating about it is she does a really good job of trying to get you to understand why women would participate in this. Because these are not stupid women. They're just women that somehow get some benefit. And she does a really good job with interviewing them and trying to get inside their heads. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about this movement is that feminists, people who identify as feminists, and people in this movement actually agree on something very important, which is that many women in the United States benefit from feminism without calling themselves feminists. So we actually agree on one thing. But the difference is that this movement believes that feminism is kind of the root of all evil, that men and women are not supposed to be equal, um, that women are really there to serve their husbands no matter what. And one of the stories she tells is about a woman whose husband uh, abuses her and essentially the the elders in the church tell her that it's her fault and that you know she is supposed to be serving him um, and she en ends up leaving the movement but there are many women who just stay there and do what they're supposed to do um, what was the other thing I was going to talk about oh the other thing that I think is uh, really significant is most of the children that are in these families are homeschooled and really I think in some ways the most powerful thing about this is that this is not just about kind of withdrawing from society. It's not a movement to say, we're going to be different than the rest of you. We're just going to stay in our houses. They are trying to produce families to counter what they see as secular humanist society. So they want to produce, um, I think it was David Brooks, the you know conservative guy, said that they're red diaper babies, sort of. They're trying to produce conservative um, Christian children to kind of counter all of the liberal humanist stuff in the world. So, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Anyway, it's it's a it, I actually have loaned it to a couple of people, and one person said I can't read more than one chapter. It was just too upsetting to her. But I read the whole thing because I thought it was really interesting, and I think the writing is really good. Um, and I'm I think that people aren't really even aware that this kind of stuff is going on. Have you guys ever seen the Duggars, that TV show? The what is it called? Eighteen and counting. That's, that's what they are. I mean, have you seen their hair and stuff? The women all, I mean, they look like they're from, you know, 1870. And they're very, I wonder what kind of drugs that woman is on because she's always really cheerful and she's had like 18 babies. I don't know. I just, I think it's a very strange thing. Uh, so I try to scare my students with making them watch the purity balls thing. And they really like that. They think it's really amazing. But it's also very creepy and incestuous in a really horrible way. So uh, I really recommend this book if you have the patience. You might want to wait till it comes out in paperback, but I, we have it in the library, so check it out. It's a great book. Catherine Joyce, recommended by me. <laughs>